First on Story Saving Tide, a new book entitled Clinton Cash, the untold story of how and why foreign governments and businesses help make Bill and Hillary rich. Very long subtitle. Well, it's putting Hillary Clinton on the defensive, no question about it. The book's going to be released in two weeks. There's already major controversy with us now to explain what's going on. Melissa Francis Wang is her own program on our sister network. The Fox Business Network, 2 p.m. Eastern Time. I have to say that. Yes. Every, if I don't say it, I get fined. Uh, sister Network. You can afford it. Uh, I can. Yeah. I can, but but um, I don't really want to get fined unless I really feel strongly, and I don't. Sister <laughs> Network is fine. Okay. Okay. So Hillary Clinton, you haven't read the book. I haven't read the book. Right. We, we're trying to be fair to uh, her. Um, the damage thus far is what? Well, here's the thing. People have long looked at the money machine that's behind the Clintons, whether it's the speeches or it's the foundation, and they've tried to say that this influences her decision making and that would be dirty. Someone needed to dig in and try and connect the dots and say on this day, the foundation of the Clintons accepted money from this government and then she made this decision the next day on behalf of the State right. Department that wasn't America's interest. He purports to have done this. They've leaked a few little bits out. This is Peter Schweitzer, right. the author, who is a conservative person. Heritage Foundation? He, I, I'm not sure if it's Heritage. I know he worked for the Hoover Institution, which Hoover, is Stanford Hoover. Think sorry, Tower. Yeah. Um, but he is, you know, he is a hardcore investigative journalist. He is respected by the New York and, Times. And, and he's going to have to back up his facts. And yeah. the Clinton Foundation finances are public. They are public. They haven't been totally transparent. And what they've put out there has been really questionable. I mean, they're taking tens of million dollars from the Saudi government. And you're wondering, you know, if the Saudis really wanted to provide mosquito netting in Africa, they could do that on their own. They don't need the Clintons. That's interesting. So you begin to wonder why, right. what, what do they think they're okay. getting for the money? So Hillary Clinton's a very powerful position as Secretary of State. Yes. But she's not a decision maker on foreign policy. President Obama mm. is the decision maker. She can, she can say, I recommend you do this. She can do a few things, but not the big things. For example, uh, I think in Mr. Schweitzer's book, he says there a cult in the nation of Colombia, mm -hmm. there was a quid pro quo, a big donation from some guy, and then all of a sudden he gets a lucrative contract. Right. right? Well, Hillary Clinton can't make those contracts happen. They have to happen at a, at a bigger level, I believe. So is it all implication? It, it, there was, it was a free trade agreement that went their way. I mean, there was money that the Clintons got yes. from uh, a board member on the Keystone XL pipeline. The State Department was looking at that and writing a report at the time. I mean, so she just said nice things and somebody else there. made the deal. Okay. Well, but still, I mean, it would be surprising if she was not against the Keystone pipeline, right? That doesn't fall into her wheelhouse. So if she's doing something outside of what you would expect, and then she's also getting money in her family, you start to really... All you right, know, two other questions things. that aren't speculative. Number one, she's running on, it seems, income inequality, yes. when she, as I just pointed out to uh, Dr. Goolsby, making all her money at the top 1%, giving speeches right. for six figures, uh, you know, and, and Bill Clinton, right. huge money. Right. All right, as she's Secretary of State, his fees went up, his lecture fees went up right. dramatically. Right. And as soon as she left, they went back down again. Right. So does this hurt her? I, I mean, it's interesting. She tries to paint herself as an every person. That's the problem. She's made hundreds of at least a hundred million dollars. Could be more. The two of them together. They point at these other CEOs that have made that kind of money. And there was that Washington Examiner article, I believe it was, where they were quibbling over who makes more, the CEO or Hillary. They're both beyond wildly wealthy. It's when she tries to then say we were dead broke coming out of the White House. But they or, were dead broke side. coming out of the White House. Because they were trying to buy a $1.7 million house and they couldn't get a mortgage. No, How it was because they had so many buy. legal fees defending Bill uh, mm -hmm. conduct that they were. But that doesn't make any difference. And the final thing that I think she may be uh, having to explain is they shelter a lot of, right. of their money so they don't have to pay taxes. It's a, What you're thinking of is the inheritance tax. And this is another thing where she's gone out there and said, rich people, you know, if you have more than $5 million, you're passing on you should pay this 40 percent tax or it should be higher 45. it turns out yeah. it turns out that they have sh wisely shielded their assets in a living trust so that chelsea won't pay that tax but she's out there advocating pounding the table for <laughs> people to pay more you pay right. but i'm not going but to I, i'm smart I'm enough not, to I'm, hire yeah, i'm not swifty do it. and swifty's got me into this right uh, what is it again? Right. I, yeah, it's a living trust. Living trust. Yeah. Swifty got me in there, but you pay right. the 45%. Right. Yeah, I mean, I think she's got some problems there. All right, Pretty Melissa difficult. Francis from our sister network.